Due to electromagnetic damping as well as mechanical damping, the first throw of the ballistic galvanometer is damped. And for a damped vibration, theta equal to theta m e to the power minus bt sin omega t plus phi. Now, in the absence of damping, first ballistic throw would be would have been theta m. So, if we look at this figure at t equal to t by 4, theta 1 is the amplitude and is given by theta 1 is equal to theta m e to the power minus b putting value of t equal to capital T by 4, we get theta 1 is equal to like this. This is the t by 4. This is t by 2, this is 3t by 4 and it is 5t by 4. So, at t equal to t by 4, we get theta 1 equal to theta m e to the power minus bt by 4, say equation 1. Theta 1 is equal to first ballistic throw on one side of the zero of the scale. This is the zero of the scale, this is the one, this is the one side, this is the other side. Theta 2, second peak throw on the other side. This is theta 1, this is theta 2 in the other side, putting t equal to 3t by 4, we get theta 2 equal to theta m e to the power minus b 3t by 4. So, theta 1 by theta 2 is clearly e to the power b t by 2. Theta m cancels out. This gives b t by 2. So, theta 1 by theta 2 equal to theta 2 by theta 3 equal to theta 3 by theta 4 all are equal to e to the power b t by 2 and say it is x, it is called decrement. If we take log of this, we get lambda, the log decrement is equal to log x equal to b t by 2. Now, from equation 1, theta 1 is equal to theta m e to the power minus lambda by 2 because b t by 2 is lambda, so it is lambda by 2. So, theta m by theta 1 is equal to e to the power lambda by 2. Then theta m is equal to theta 1 e to the power lambda by 2. Look at this equation. Theta m by theta 1 is equal to b t by 4, but the b t by 2 is lambda, so it is lambda by 2. So theta m is equal to theta 1 e to the power lambda by 2. Now e to the power lambda by 2 can be expanded as 1 plus lambda by 2 plus lambda square by 8 plus so on. Lambda being small, lambda square by 8 and higher terms can be neglected, leaving theta m equal to theta 1 into 1 plus lambda by 2. So, charge which is c by n h a constant into t by 2 pi into there was a theta, but actual theta is theta 1 into 1 plus lambda by 2 instead of theta m. Theta m is the throw, ballistic throw without damping. But there is a damping, so the corrected formula is q is equal to like this. Again, theta 1 by theta 2 is equal to e to the power bt by 2. So, theta 1 by theta 2 equal to theta by 3 theta 3 is equal to e to the power beta by 2 equal to e to the power lambda, bt by 2 being lambda. To find the log decrement, let theta 1 equal to first deflection of light spot on one side of 0 of the scale. Say this is the 0 of the scale, then theta 1 is deflection on this side of the scale, extremant. Similarly, theta 2n plus 1 is the deflection on same side, on the same side as in theta 1. Theta 2n plus 1 is equal to deflection on same side as theta 1 at the end of nth oscillation. This is theta 2n plus 1, say. Then, theta 1 by theta 2n plus 1 can be written as theta 1 by theta 2 into theta 2 by theta 3 and so on. Theta 2n by theta 2n plus 1. Theta 2, theta 2 cancels out. Theta 3, theta 3 cancels out. Theta 2n cancels out, leaving theta 1 by theta 2n plus 1. Now, each term is equal to e to the power lambda. In the previous discussion, we have seen 
theta 1 by theta 2 theta 1 by theta 2 theta 2 by 3 to 3 all are equal and is equal to e to the power bt by 2 means lambda that is e to the power lambda so each term being e to the power lambda there are 20 terms so e to the power 20 lambda taking log on both side lambda is equal to 1 by 20 ln theta 1 by theta 20 plus 1 if we convert it into log base 10 it gives like this lambda is equal to a formula like this but this requires the knowledge of 0 Without the knowledge of 0, we cannot find out the exact value of theta 1 as well as the exact value of theta 2n plus 1. So, it requires knowledge of 0 position of light spot, which introduces error. This can be eliminated in the following way. Theta 1 by theta 2, theta 2 by theta 3 may be written as theta 1 plus theta 2 divided by theta 2 plus theta 3 beta equal to say beta 1 by beta 2 equal to x because theta 1 by theta 2 equal to x. Again theta 2 by theta 3 equal to theta 3 by theta 4. Again component of dividend gives theta 2 plus theta 3 divided by theta 3 plus theta 3 equal to beta 2 by beta 3 equal to x. So we can write beta 1 by beta 2 it is x beta 2 by beta 3 again x and all this value are as told earlier e to the power lambda x equal to theta 1 by theta 2 and it is e to the power lambda there are 20 terms so it is again e to the power 20 lambda beta 2 beta 2 cancels out beta 2n cancels out leaving beta 1 by beta 2n plus 1 so beta 1 by beta 2n plus 1 equal to e to the power 20 lambda taking again log we get lambda is equal to like this where beta 1 is equal to theta 1 plus theta 2 and beta 2n plus equal to theta 2n plus 1 plus theta 2n plus 2. Theta 1 and theta 2 are the positions of the light spot to the extreme left and the right. This is theta 1, this is theta 2 or say this is theta 1 or theta 2. Now, theta 1 and theta 2 are the positions of the light spot to the extreme left and right. This is theta 1 and this is theta 2 during the first half of the first oscillation. Theta 2n plus 1 and theta 2n plus 2, this is say theta 2n plus 1, this is theta 2n plus 2 are the positions of the light spot to the extreme left and extreme right n during the first half of the n plus 1th oscillation. After n plus 1th oscillation, amplitude will be decreased due to damping. So this is theta 2n plus 1 and this is say theta 2n plus 2. Since betas are the sums of successive deflections, beta 1 is equal to theta 1 plus theta 2 and beta 2n plus 1 equal to theta 2n plus 1 plus theta 2n plus 2. The sums of the successive deflections on the two sides of the 0, either side, this side, this side, on two sides of the 0 of the scale, the error affecting the individual deflection due to inaccurate, inaccurate reading of the 0 are eliminated in the determination of vitas. So, this procedure is followed in determining the log decrement. In this experiment, we are going to measure the mutual inductance between the two coils. What is mutual inductance? Mutual inductance between two circuits is defined as the flux linked with one circuit due to unit current in the other. If I is the current in any circuit, then due to this current I, flux in the other circuit, 
phi is equal to m i. Now, ballistic galvanometer measures charge. So, we have to find out a relation between flux and the charge. I have already discussed this relation in my video on Hall probe experiment, but I am again telling this for your clarity. Look, from Newman's law, E is equal to simply d phi dt, ignoring the negative sign, taking magnitude only. Therefore, d phi is equal to E dt. If we integrate this from time 0 to t, flux from 0 to phi and divide both side by resistance R, E by R gives the current. So, it is I dt 0 to t and it is phi by R. Integration I dt is charge because dq dt is nothing but current I. So, dq is equal to I dt integrating it from 0 to t for a small time the charge is 0 to q so q is equal to i dt integration 0 to t thus charge is nothing but flux by r here flux equal to m i so charge will be m i by r this charge in ballistic galvanometer is measured by the formula c by nh t by 2 pi into theta m theta m is the deflection in absence of any damping but there is a damping theta m is the deflection if we, if would have been no damping but there is a damping so this is c by nh t by 2 pi t is the time period of oscillation of the coil of the ballistic galvanometer this is theta 1 into 1 plus lambda by 2 which is discussed already discussed in my video on log decrement lambda is called log decrement c by nh is the constant of the ballistic galvanometer so is k by t k into t by 2 pi into theta 1 is the first ballistic throw due to damping taking into consideration damping this is the expression for charge this is the circuit for determining mutual inductance between two coils and this is our formula this mi by r just reduced t by 2 pi into k into theta 1 into 1 plus lambda by 2 now this constant of ballistic galvanometer is unknown to us. To eliminate this, we have to perform a secondary experiment. And the circuit for determining mutual inductance between two coils is like this. This is a very small resistance R, say of 0.01 ohm or 0.1 ohm or 0 0.01 ohm. Why it is so small, I am coming to this point. But before that, this is a plug commutator I have already discussed the function of plug commutator in a separate video this is a key system look when we are putting key in between these two points and these two points these two circuits are separated from each other only flux change in primary causes a flux change in secondary which gives ballistic throw as just discussed. To eliminate this constant k, we are now removing these keys from this to this. Keys are between this point and this point. So, circuits are directly connected. So, we are getting steady deflection. In previous case, I am repeating, key was between these two points and these two points. So, this circuit is isolated from this circuit only flux change causes a ballistic throw due to a flow of charge 
So this deflection is ballistic through. This D1 deflection is ballistic. But in the second case, the key is between this point and this point. So two circuits are directly connected and a steady current flows through the ballistic galvanometer and this way. So we are measuring steady deflection in that case. If I is the current, then a potential is created in at this point is I into R. This potential divided by R, the resistance of the ballistic galvanometer circuit, which is same as earlier. For in the first case, resistance is R. In the second case, resistance is also R. It is very important. So, if we divide these two equations, R and K are eliminated, giving mutual inductance like this. And the detail of the log decrement is discussed in separate video. Now, what is the necessity of small r? Look, here i and r is the same in two cases. In ballistic throw as well as in steady throw, these two are same. So, we can eliminate I and R. But why we are using small value of resistance R here? And another question is why we are try to, at taking attempt to equal values of theta 1 and theta 2, almost equal values of theta 1, theta 2. Why we are taking an attempt to equal values of theta 1 and theta 2? I am coming to this point later. First of all, I am trying to explain why we are taking the small value of R. It is very important. Look, this is the battery. Let its CMF is C. And resistance in this circuit is R1. The resistance of the primary and secondary being small, it is neglected. In case of ballistic throw, key is in between these two points and key is between these two points. So, in this case, two circuits are isolated. So, current in this circuit is given by E divided by R1 plus R. I is equal to E divided by R1 plus R. Note that we cannot change this current in the strict case of steady deflection when K is between this and this. So, E is constant, R1 we cannot change, so only way is to change R. In case of steady deflection, E is equal to IR, leaving E into R divided by R1 plus R. This gives a deflection theta 2, K theta 2 is equal to K theta 2. Suppose we have to increase theta 2 so that theta 1 and theta 2 may go to equal value. We are attempting to equate theta 1 and theta 2. So suppose we have to increase theta 2. So we have to increase r. If r is large, then increase of r in numerator will cause increase of r in denominator. But if r is small as in as it is in our case, we can neglect r in the denominator. So e is equal to E R divided by R1. So if we instead of small r use E capital R divided by R1 plus capital R and trying to increase theta 2 or decrease theta 2, we have to increase R, but R is in numerator as well as in denominator. So increase in R in numerator causes increase in value in the denominator. As numerator and denominator both are increasing, so ratio will remain same, we cannot increase theta 2. If we try to decrease the value of R, again R is decreased, so ratio remains same, we cannot decrease the value of theta. The only way is to use a small value of resistance so that it can be neglected in the denominator giving like this ER divided by R1. So E and R1 being constant, 
increase of r will cause increase of theta decrease of r will decrease theta so this is the only way out to increase theta to to a value of theta 1 so that our attempt will be successful now question is that why we are attempting to make the steady deflection d2 and first through d1 nearly equal it is because to eliminate as far as possible the error due to non-uniformity of the flux density of the permanent magnet of the galvanometer there is a permanent magnet inside the ballistic galvanometer which is non-uniform and that very non-uniformity causes some error in finding theta 1 and theta 2 and so m will be inaccurate to have a correct value of m we have to make equal theta 1 and theta 2 so our attempt is to make the steady deflection d2 and the first row almost equal 